All right, so huge news. We can put this up on the screen. There are massive protests in Israel. And the, res the reason for these protests are you had six hostages, including that Israeli American um, whose parents spoke at the DNC, who were found dead in the Gaza Strip. We're gonna talk more about the, their circumstances of their death in, in a moment, which appears to be, and this was sort of confirmed by Hamas, um, that as IDF soldiers were closing in on them, their Hamas or other affiliated captors were under instructions to rather than let them be rescued by the IDF to shoot them and kill them. However, the reason these protests have broken out, and they are, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people in the streets, best I can tell, largest protests since these, uh, this war um, began, you know, post-October 7th, is because they directly and correctly blame Bibi Netanyahu for putting his own political survival over the survival of the hostages. So, you know, that has been the framing of a lot of Israeli media. That has been, uh, I'm going to play you for you in a moment, one of the key opposition figures in Israel. They are saying, the hostage families, they are directly saying, their blood is on your hands. Because rather than take the deal that was on the table, rather than negotiate in good faith, you have done nothing but try to undercut these negotiations and guarantee that the war would continue because of your desire to maintain your own political standing. So uh, in addition to these protests, and you, what I showed you in that video was they were being treated incredibly aggressively by the Israeli police, sprayed with what's called skunk spray. Um, they also were hit with stun grenades. You might Contrast that with the treatment and encouragement of the right-wing protesters who were blocking aid going into Gaza, where they were enabled, encouraged, etc. Here, very, you know, a pretty vicious crackdown from the Israeli police. Let's put D2 up on the screen. In addition to the protest, there was a relatively brief general strike um, led by this long-standing labor union in Israel. Um, friend of the show, Demi Reader, had put out a long thread sort of explaining the background of this union, what they are. My understanding, based on his thread, is that it's a sort of, you know, very top-down labor union tied in pretty closely with the government. There was a ruling that came back that said, hey, you can't do this general strike because it doesn't directly have an economic tie-in, and they just sort of like back down, like, okay, fine, whatever. But that doesn't undercut the fact that you've had this huge grassroots in the streets reaction to this latest news. Let me go ahead and put D3 up on the screen to give you some of the details here. This is from the Washington Post. Headline is protests escalate in Israel after six hostages' bodies are recovered in Gaza, including Hirsch Goldberg Poland, that Israeli American I met referenced before, and five others that Hamas took hostage on October 7th. Um, according to the IDF, and as I said, sort of confirmed by Hamas, they were killed shortly before being found. Um, they say in this article, Israelis react with shock and fury after the bodies of those six hostages were recovered. Um, they also say that um, they were found roughly half a mile from the tunnel where the IDF rescued a living hostage last week. The bodies were taken to the National Center of Forensic Medicine, where an examination determined the six had been killed by multiple close-range gunshots. Again, that's the Israeli um, analysis of what happened. But, Sagar, getting to some of the reaction from some of the hostages' families, one of the hostages who had been released in the previous brief ceasefire deal, released in November after 55 days in captivity, accused Bibi of, quote, perpetrating psychological terror on us like Hamas perpetrated on us. So that is the strength of the sentiment among a lot of the population. Yeah, it's been very interesting to consume this through Western media, through US media, and then through Israeli media. So I was in the UK when all this was happening, so I watched BBC. BBC is actually quite good, I hate to say it, but uh, they do a general- Better you know, than our news media. They, they do a good job of being like, here's a view from Israel. Here's the here's a view from, uh, from the US, like US politician, President Biden, 
Biden has issued this. Here's what the prime minister has said. And actually, the UK just suspended some arms sales to Israel. So you know, there's a little bit of a difference in the way that they think about things over there. Well, and that got, was, you know, Keir Starmer in charge now. So go. Labor, he's been, he's he's pretty pro-Israel, but at least he feels like he it's needs different. to make some sort of moves in this direction. The well, only point is that it's so different in the way that you consume a lot of this. Because if you were watching Fox News, you'd be like, oh, this is 100% on Joe Biden. And you're like, what? Like, how is that possible? If you watch MSNBC, I guess you're probably just going to be like, this is 100% on Bibi. Uh, but, I mean, the view in Israel seems to be a major split between those who are pro-hostage negotiation and ceasefire because their prime objective is saving the hostages, not the so-called destruction of Hamas. And then where you fall on that question is kind of whether you agree with the prosecution of the war and even the aims of the war itself. So that is a big kind of interesting thing because in America, you know, if you were to look at what people think the prime aim, aim of the Israeli military would be, in America, it's probably the destruction of Hamas and like the revenge for October 7th, whereas they think about things very, very differently over there. The fact that the protests did explode like this against the Israeli government after they were literally murdered in cold blood by Hamas does tell you, though, something, is mm -hmm. that they're not willing to be like, this is 100% on Hamas, kind of the way that a U.S.-based commentator predominantly is saying that. Now, of course, they did murder them, and they did murder them in cold blood, which is horrible. Um, from the Israeli side, they're like, yeah, we know that they're bloodthirsty terrorists. That's why we need to do a ceasefire to get them the hell out of there. Yeah. And the way that you think about that is really important. I don't know, though, how much credence to even give that side, though, at this point, because if the ceasefire just seems so impossible at this current time. I mean, with the U.S. government, all these various frameworks it just seems to me that if it was going to happen, it would have happened. And I think Israel has cast its eye. I think they, the Net, Bibi Netanyahu government, as it currently stands, I don't think they will ever agree to a ceasefire. Uh, under Hamas, maybe it was possible before, um, who was it, was killed. Uh, but after that, you know, the people who are left in power are mm -hmm. not the ones. Yeah, they're not the ones who want to pursue a ceasefire. Um, and it seems here that these, uh, the Hamas people who murdered the terrorists, or sorry, murdered the hostages, and were on orders from higher command to kill them if they were to ever fall into IDF, um, if they were to fall back into IDF custody, the people who are in power seem to be just as extreme, if not more extreme, than before. So we're in a lose-lose situation on both of those sides. So uh, it was uh, Ismail Haniyeh yeah, who was assassinated yeah. in um, in Iran, in the Iranian capital, in Tehran. Um, and he was the lead negotiator. Right. He was like the head of the political wing of Hamas. And now it's Yahya Sinwar who orchestrated the October right. 7th attacks, who is now the lead negotiator has been put into that position. So yeah, I mean, Bibi literally murdered <laughs> the in a foreign nation's capital, the lead negotiator. So I think that's pretty telling about his commitment to these negotiations. And the Israeli people aren't stupid. They can see all of this. Um, there is talk. Listen, I'm not there. I don't have a fine understanding of Israeli politics, so I can't say how mm -hmm. likely this is or not. But, you know, our friend uh, Shael mm -hmm. ben Ephraim, who's like a, a liberal Zionist who we had on the show before, and others are saying there is a chance Bibi's government could actually fall this week if these protests continue, um, and especially if you were to have a longer general strike, which the general strike has already ended, as I mentioned before, so perhaps some of that pressure has been taken off, but you still have polls saying 70% of Israelis want Bibi to go. They do not want him to stand for election again. So there is definitely a majority sentiment of we would like to move on from this particular brand of political leadership. And if the, the pressure cooker gets turned up high enough, potentially you could see the government fall this week. I, I have to be skeptical and cynical of that just because this guy is such a freaking political survivor. You know, I mean, I just have to go back to that. He's made it this far when after October 7th, his whole philosophy of security was in tatters. His reputation was in utter tatters. Yes, of course, people blame Hamas as they should, but they also looked and said, listen, you're the one who said we could work with these people. You're the one who said, hey, well, why don't we, you're the one who sent these IDF troops 
to the West Bank to guard settlers rather than being there in the Gaza Strip. You're the one who failed in terms of assessing this, even though your own people were warning that there was some sort of a plan about to be put into action. We now know they had the plans in advance. They just didn't take it seriously. So he has survived this far. So, you know, at this point, it, you'd be probably a fool to bet against him surviving a little bit further. And it's not that long till election day. And we all know who he wants to get into office. You know, with regard to the ceasefire piece, we're going to talk to Jeremy Scahill more about this. But you had Biden come out. He got out, asked to like shouted questions. BB doing enough to secure a ceasefire deal. And he said no. It's like, I mean, the only way a ceasefire deal is actually going to happen is if the U.S. says this is happening, we're cutting off your weapons, like this is it, this is the end of the road, we're making it happen, we're enforcing it, period, end of story. There was, um, this is a reporting from Jeremy, there was actually, you know, the, remember when Biden gave the big speech saying, hey, the, the, here's the deal that Israel's agreed to, and now we're just waiting on Hamas to agree. Well, Hamas agreed to that deal. And then Bibi undercuts it and puts in a bunch of provisions, poison pills that he knows are put in there intentionally to guarantee that Hamas would never agree to that. So there should have been a deal back then. Israel said, we accept this deal, and Hamas said, we accept this deal. And then Israel went back on their word and said, no, no, actually, we need these 10 other provisions to guarantee that, you know, that Hamas won't accede to the deal. And I mean, that just makes it extra, heart extra heartbreaking to see the level of death and destruction that has continued since July, including these hostages, including this, Israeli-American, um, and also including the Palestinians who have been murdered between then and now when there should have been a peace deal in hand. The Biden people are now saying like, oh, we're going to put a take, take it or leave a deal on the table. It's like, well, you know, Israel's going to leave it. <laughs> like, that's entirely predictable at this point. So until you are willing to say no more arms, you are done, end of story, we're finished here. Until that happens, this Horror is going to continue. Um, Kamala Harris, we can put her response up on the screen. You know, there, to your point, Sagar, about just the level of contrast between the commentary of figures like Vice President Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and the news media here versus the Israeli public opposition figures, news media there are extraordinary. She used the, the same, you know, basically framing as uh, a Netanyahu would. She says Hamas is an evil terrorist organization. With these murders, Hamas has even more American blood on its hands. Um, she went on to say that the thr threat Hamas poses to people of Israel and American citizens in Israel must be eliminated. Again, that's Bibi's type language. And Hamas cannot control Gaza. You have so many American officials, including the Secretary of Defense, who says Hamas cannot be eliminated. So at this late date, for her to still be buying into this fantasy that Hamas could quote unquote be eliminated is just foolish, unacceptable, unnecessary, all of those things. Um, in fact, there were reports that Hamas has recruited thousands more fighters. They're reconstituted in the North and are reasserting their capabilities. So what exactly are we doing here? In direct contrast to that type of tone, from uh, Kamala Harris, you had opposition leader Yair Lapid in Israel. I can put this up on the screen. He's speaking in Hebrew. I'll just read you a little bit of what he says here. He says, they were just alive. Netanyahu and his cabinet of death chose not to rescue the hostages. I call on the labor union, large businesses, and local authorities to shut down the economy. So that is more the tenor of the conversation that is happening there. And um, finally, let's put this up on the screen. This is Caitlin Collins says, a group representing the families of Israeli hostages is calling for Bibi to address the nation, which he did, but he didn't do this part, and take responsibility for abandoning the hostages. They say the recovery of these bodies is a direct result of failing to sign a deal. They were all murdered in the last few days after surviving almost 11 months of abuse, torture, and starvation in Hamas captivity. The delay in signing the deal has led to their deaths and those of many other hostages. Again, mincing no words in where the hostage families 
are placing the blame directly at the feet of Bibi Netanyahu. Yeah, uh, and again, you know, the tenor in the conversation, very, very different over there in terms of what the criticism and that look like, and from the hostages themselves. That's always yeah. what's been so annoying. You know, you'll have hostages literally rescued who are like, we almost died and we're bombed and you need to do a ceasefire. And then if you say that in America, people are like, you're pro Hamas. It's like words have meaning, uh, you know, throughout all of this. And apparently they don't, they only have meaning uh, in Israel, they have no meaning here in America. And I think there is a real reason for that in terms of the way that the conversation and all of that here is controlled. But in terms of where things go, look, maybe the guy is right, uh, but I just, I don't, I always bet on his political survival. He's an animal, you know? He's very, very talented. It takes, and you know, this is- In a is, Machiavellian way. Yes, in a, a Machiavellian way. He's a literal survivor. He survived the Supreme Court thing. He survived October 7th, survived the interwar period. He's managed the relationship with the United States in terms of playing both political parties pretty effectively. Absolutely. I think APAC is a major winner right now than at any time ever before. The AD as well. All of their political machinery in Washington has been, you know, exercised at the highest level and mostly has won almost every fight that they've engaged in. So I, I don't bet against him. I don't bet against him coming out of this. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show, help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.